it's it's really tough to deal with because I you know I'll have people I'm really worried about addiction and okay well you're on opiates and gabapentin here so you know you're already on like hugely addictive medication and you're dealing with those fines so don't worry that this is going to throw you off um, the stigma is is real and it's there um, I have a number of RCMP officers in my practice and obviously they carry a burden where they're now being helped for their PTSD, for their chronic pain, by something that they used to throw people in jail for or harass people for. So they have often have kind of a, a feeling uh, that they, you know, did, did some wrong things back in the time. Um, but that stigma is still there and they, you know, they're very nervous about coming to the office. Um, a lot of people like the aspect of ordering online because they don't want to be seen in the store. So there's, uh, the stigma isn't going away. It's, uh, it's still, uh, there from uh, decades of uh, misinformation. The biggest thing for us uh, is is older patients. So they and they're coming. They're coming to us for two reasons now. They never would have come and seen us about cannabis, but they're hearing about it from all their friends, all their bridge club uh, people. That they're, the, those people are getting benefits. So they're hearing that, and then their kids are saying, "You should try this." So they're kind of hearing it from their friends and from their kids now. Then they come in and we say, look, you know, we're not going to get you smoking bongs here. That's not what it, this is all about. And when we show them the oils and we show them the topicals, they say, okay, well, this is, this is medicine. I can see this being medicine now. So uh, we certainly have work to do and uh, we do a lot of work just destigmatizing.